Hey, everybody. Final thoughts time for Food Chain Magnet. Although, fair warning, there's no way you could ever consider these final thoughts because if you watch my run through, you just witnessed my first attempt ever at even playing this game. So let's call them preliminary thoughts, but not really because they're my final thoughts because I'm not going to finish this game. I'm never going to play this game again because as I suspected, this is definitely not a game for me and Jen. This is a game, although man, just from what I've seen so far, there is a lot a lot to like here. And it does kind of make me sad that Splatter has, while they've introduced some really wonderful gameplay mechanisms, they've put in a game that's just not a good fit for me and Jen. First of all, I love the theme. Absolutely love the drive-in, um, diner, building, 50s Americana feel. Um, you know, I guess some people are going to be very, very uh, upset with the quality of some of the components, namely the map, but I don't really think it, I mean, I, I think it kind of has almost kind of a retro charm to it, and certainly all the card art, the, these are lovely, they, they, they're they nice feeling cards, they look great, it is kind of a shame they, you know, it would be kind of nice if, I don't know, if, if even if just these were green with like a simple grass texture on them to, you know, indicate, or, or, or something, I don't know, but it's okay, it, it's, it, it's, I, the majority of the game actually looks really great. The wooden components are nice. I love the the classic clip art that they've used for all the different characters you can hire. They all look great. The only minor, you know, I love the box cover. I think it's great. It'd be great if these were a little bit higher quality, but they suffice. So on the whole, it's got a great presentation. I think it looks really nice. I really like it. Although, man, I am not a fan of this. Hey, let's put everything out on the table. Now, strictly speaking, one of the greatest player aids in industry means you don't have to, and I have actually seen people on Board Game Geek coming up with like really clever solutions, like you know taking a thick piece of cardboard like this, uh, folding it up, you know, kind of uh, corrugated like a fan, and then putting it so you can like turn your box lid into a card holder, which is very clever. And I, if I were to play this game, I would definitely do something like that because this is really obnoxious, t filling up half your table with a bunch of cards. And when you don't need to, because all the information is right here, which is really nice. So these cards could just exist as a big, gigantic stack of cards that people dig through. The only restriction is um, it's possible, you know, in a two or three player game, there's only one CFO. There's only one brand director. There's only one executive vice president. So you might want to keep those separate, but... Uh, I, 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 I don't think that's necessary, but keeping all of the milestones out, I think you would have to do that. You want that as a reminder every game because weirdly, I don't know why, while it's awesome that they put a nice reminder of all the jobs in case you're sitting at the far end of the table and can't see all the people you can hire, they didn't put one for all of the milestones, which they really should have, so you have all of that as a glance. Now, my understanding is this: I have the first edition printing. They, um, they're on their third edition printing of this now, and they have changed it, so the back page of this, of the player aid, is what it should be. A list of all the milestones instead of what you don't really need a breakdown of how marketing works that's nice too but it'd be much nicer to have all the because then you wouldn't have to have all the milestones out either although the reason to have them all out is so with such a big complex heavy game there's so many things going on it's nice just to be able to look and say oh well, what milestones are still available oh crap that milestone is gone okay that completely changed my strategy that kind of stuff it is kind of nice to keep them all out there so it is probably for the best if you've got the table space to lay it all out like this as insane as this is but okay so what do i like about the game having played i think i was maybe about halfway through a game based on how far i'd gotten well um I love this this food chain you build with you on top. You know, I just love that the CEO, you! Um, and okay, I can hire three people, although Jen's upgraded to four. And, you know, in every round, you make a, um, you know, like a human resources hierarchy structure of, okay, well, this person's going to work for this person, this person's going to work for this person, this person's off by themselves. Okay, this person's going to cost me five bucks in salary, uh, but I already have a $5 discount from, you know, all these other things. I think this is brilliant. I love this. I would love to see this kind of idea in a game that isn't quite so cutthroat because, you know, it's obvious that the nature of the area control here, this is all about, okay, somebody did the work, they, you know, they put in the time and the resources to set up a marketing campaign to make all these people want food, and then, what do you know, um, everybody else just descends like vultures and undercuts them price-wise and just, you know, steals all that hard work for them. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's actually clever and solid. It seems like it makes a lot of sense, but it also seems, it's just, you know, this, is very dog eat dog. Um, you know, this is very fast food franchise eats fast food franchise as it should be because it is a 
an economic simulation of a very, very cutthroat market where diners will open, um, you know, places right across the street from each other and then compete with uh, by lowering and lowering their prices to get all of that, all that sweet money. Because when I market to get people excited in lemonade, they're not necessarily going to buy my lemonade. They might buy your lemonade if you can anticipate what I'm going to do and then you can beat me with your actual lemonade. And um, but you know, but that's. And that's another thing you can do. You know, if I see that you're doing really, really fantastically, you've kind of sewn up a market and I can't get over there, oh, well, fine. I'll just put out some marketing that makes them want lemonade too. And now you can't make lemonade, but I can. And I'm over on the other side of town and I'm making my lemonade and my burgers. So they're just all going to completely ignore you, drive right by you, and come to me. So I, I do think it's, it's a very, very interesting game of ebb and flow. You're even starting to see some ebb and flow in this game. Although, man, I, I'd be really curious to know. It really feels like building up your recruiting ability early on is absolutely essential. And, um, and probably your ability to hire other people. Um, because I was really suffering for not being able to do that. To watch Jen do six or seven actions every turn where I was only doing three because um, Jen was able to hire so many more people than me. Um, you know, so I don't know if that feels a little bit... You know, was, but how can I say? I, my gut feeling is that maybe the beginning of this game um, is a bit scripted because everybody's probably going to chase after, right, okay, i got to get my infrastructure going. But maybe not. I, I'm just totally guessing. I, you would need to play this game five, six times before, because it's definitely a rich and deep. So please, you know, I, I, I can't comment on that at all. I'm, I'm saying this right now, it feels like recruiting girl is kind of absolutely essential. And or training and management trainee. Uh, maybe not though, because you know if you go, that's the thing. If you go for recruiting girl earlier, that only gives you a shortcut to one particular milestone, and maybe you're giving up on a lot of other milestones. And maybe that's the way it works. Okay, I'm not going to recruit. I'm just going to hire a whole bunch of little people and have them do work that's a total waste of time, just so I can lock up all these milestones. You have a huge lead, but I've set the game up so that it'll be very, very long, so I have more than enough time by the end of the game to have all these people who can do all this stuff and all these bonuses that only I have. That means I could be turning over a hundred and profit every round and I could quickly catch up. I suspect that's the intent, but I don't know because this game is a bit too harsh and a bit too aggressive for my taste. Another thing that I'm really not crazy about, although there's nothing wrong with it and it's obviously it's kind of crucial to the game's success is this is such a big wide open game. Every time you play you just have to kind of arbitrarily choose. I mean I guess you can make some decisions based on what type of terrain you've grabbed because you know the first thing that happens is the board actually you know randomly gets created and then people in reverse turn order grab a little plot of land. And you know what? Maybe by the time you grab land, you weren't able to grab any good positions next to houses, but you were in a good position next to a lot of, uh, you know, like cola refineries, you know, with these spaces on the board. So you'll say, well, to heck with that. I'm just going to go on ahead and try to go heavy into drinks. And I'll be the drinks king. Then I'll start marketing my drinks all over the place. And um, I get all these bonuses for making and selling drinks. And, uh, and I market to all the people that you used to sell to. Now they won't come to you. They'll come to me because I'm the drinks king. And again, you can have a mid-game swing. And your opponents have to recognize, oh, crap. He's the drinks king. When he really kicks in his marketing, and you know, the marketing becomes very interesting as well because all I showed you was one marketing campaign that run through. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, these billboards. Next up is, um, you know, uh, well, I don't know quite what the order of them is, but you can do mail order campaigns where the outline of this map becomes very interesting because you put a mail order campaign and it affects what's called the entire block, which you know could be like a space in this map. I mean, half of the map would be affected by one mail order campaign. Or you can do these airline cam these air campaigns, you know, like banners, where you take the thing, you put it on the edge of the board, and it's going to affect every house that it flies over. So you can do some very aggressive marketing to get people excited in the stuff that you've created, and at the same time get people bored with the stuff that your opponents are creating that you're not creating. Um, you know, so that's a really cool idea. Again, if you're looking for a game that's all about brinksmanship and kind of hosing over your opponent, and you know, honestly, just from this half play, I can see why Food Chain Magnet has gotten so much love and so much buzz from people who like really big, heavy, meaty economic simulations. It, this, is, this is the top of the heap. It's a brilliantly designed thing. It works really, really cleverly. This whole thing at the beginning of the game of choosing what the reserve is going to be, 
Well, right off the bat, you have to make your own arbitrary decision about whether you want it to be a long or short game. You can't be guaranteed of whether it's going to be a long or short game because of what other players are going to do. But you can try to anticipate once you know the game well enough and you can anticipate, oh, I see they're going for a long-term strategy. I better abandon my short-term strategy because that means they probably put a long-term card in, or et cetera, et cetera. I imagine there are huge unplumbed depths. And I've read on Board Game Geek of people who played this five, ten times already, and they're still learning, they're still discovering. And that's the mark of a phenomenal game. This is a phenomenal game that's just not for me and Jen. And that's it, folks. That is Foon Shane Magnet. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Otherwise, I think I'm going to apologize profusely for any mistakes I made. Like I said, there's probably a higher level of mistakes than normal, but still, Put goofs aside, hopefully you have a pretty good idea of what this game feels like to play. And you can always, um, you know, check out Paolo's notes to make note of if I, I did, you know, I should have done A and then B instead of B and then A, or I had, you know, or forgot little steps. Hopefully you, 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 you have a sense for the rhythm and the pacing and the feel, because that's all I'm trying to do with this run through a food chain magnet. So thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye bye